Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be doing some AI logic. In this specific tutorial request we will be doing something along the lines of point of interests. Uh, a character that's uh, walking up to different uh, cameras and other things like that, examining them and then reacting based on if they have been tampered with or not. So let's just jump in to look at what we're going to be creating. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Here we have essentially what we will be creating in this tutorial series. We have an AI character over here, and he has these three different objects in the world, these boxes that are representing security cameras or something else that he has on his patrol list of things to examine and to do. So he's going to get a list of all of these available into the world. He's going to be examining all of them by running up to them, playing a placeholder animation as in investigating the object. And if the object is functional, he will continue with the next object on his list and just keep repeating that until he runs out of objects. If he runs out of objects, he will then uh, continue. I can demonstrate this. Let's make all of these functional. So if we play, he will run through all of these different objects uh, and he will place, play the placeholder animation, checking them. Everything is fine. He's moving on to the next one. If that is done, he will then wait for a little bit and then he will resume by starting the tasks from the top again. So this is what he keeps doing here. However, if he runs into a situation where one of these are not functioning, he will instead uh, stop his patrol mode. And when he completes this one, he will say he needs to search for a player or start investigating or something else. In this specific scenario here, I have him walking around to three different random locations and waiting there for a few seconds. And if nothing has happened, he resumes the patrol from the start again. So now he starts here and then gets to this non-functional one and again enters that mode. And yeah, that's what we will be creating. Here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26. Now we have some very basic components in place here. We can see from the green here that I've placed a navigation mesh into the level. We have two third person characters here, one which is going to be possessed by the player and one that is not. So that one will be possessed by a player controller of an AI. Uh, sorry, not a player controller, an AI controller. What we also created is a blueprint for an AI controller. It's completely empty. It doesn't have any functionality except for the basic ones. And we have assigned it to be the AI controller that is used by a third person character if it is being used by an AI. And that's essentially everything that we're working with to begin with, except for having imported some anim starter pack animations uh, just to make use of some of the animations for, for this uh, for displaying of what is happening essentially. So they're mer merely placeholders. So let's start working on the actual logic. To start off, we can go into our third person character and we can go to our event graph. And here on the event begin play, we can put some logic. So uh, we're going to be generating or putting in some uh, actors into the world, which will represent things like cameras and stuff like that, that the AI is supposed to uh, examine. Uh, we will do so that we will get all of these actors in the beginning. So get all actors uh, and we can take them off uh, class or rather Let's do an interface instead. Uh, so all of these equipments we will give an interface and all of them will be gathered in the beginning. And then after that we can promote it and uh, save it for later. So we just have it done in the beginning and don't have to do it multiple times throughout. So to do this, uh, finish this off, we have to create that interface. So go to Blueprint. Okay, there we go. Blueprints, we call it uh, BPI underscore um, security equipment. Security. That is how you spell security. Excellent. For now, we don't need to put any functionality into it. We'll just go back to our third person character. We'll get the ones with. BPI security equipment. 
So now we're going to get all of those actors. We'll promote this to a variable and save it. And we'll call this uh, security equipment ref. So now we have it saved so we can make use of it later. Now we want to have some kind of uh, start at which we signify we're, we're going to start patrolling to check all of the equipment. So we're going to be making a custom event. We can call this one start patrol. What this one will do is it will take all of our equipment that we have created the references for earlier and make a copy of it. The reason we want to make a copy out of it is because we want to have sort of like a working to-do list for the AI. So whenever it has checked off a piece of equipment, it will remove it from that array and not go back to it later on. So we will get the reference to the existing references we have. We will promote that to a variable and we'll call this... Uh, let's see... Uh, patrol equipment ref, or something like that. You can of course choose other names if you want to later on but for now this will do I think. Uh, what we want to do at the beginning is also uh, we want to initialize this and make sure that we have one of these in the beginning. So we'll call start patrol here. There. So now we have initialized and we have all of these things available to us. Now we want to start actually working a little bit on our behavior trees. So to make this both as clear as possible and as uh, easy to follow along, uh, we will be dividing this up a little bit. So to begin, we will go to blueprints and we'll get an enumerator and we'll call this E underscore AI state. And let's put in a few states here so we can work with those. We will call the first one patrolling. We'll call the second one searching. So it will either go around patrolling for equipment and if it finds an equipment that is broken or tampered with, it will go into searching mode instead. That's essentially what this uh, state is signifying. What we will do is we will create one behavior tree for each of the different states that the AI can be in. This way we can have our logic sort of encapsulated within whatever it's supposed to do when it is doing something specific. So like if, if it is patrolling, it has a certain behavior tree, how it's supposed to act then. If it however changes into going to searching for a player or searching what's wrong with a piece of equipment, then instead we will change to a different behavior tree and thus we can make each of the behavior trees much smaller and have the logic much eas more easily handled essentially. So going to artificial intelligence we will create a behavior tree. We'll call it bt underscore and we can call it uh, patrolling to be consistent. And we can make another behavior tree immediately now when we're here and call it bt underscore searching. Uh, we want to have a blackboard so we can have some variables to store in these tables. We'll go to artificial intelligence and blackboard. We'll call it bb underscore point of interest. Like so. And that's the base we're going to be having our AI logic around, except for some uh, tasks that we will be creating as well. With these uh, parts now created, we can now go into our AI controller, which is blank as you can see here. And what we want to do here is essentially we want to have the ability to change between these different behavior tree states. So we can create the blueprint to make this a little bit easier to handle later on. Uh, so blueprint interface, call it BPI, we can call it um, AI states. And inside of that blueprint interface, we'll create a function. We will call it uh, set new state. That makes sense to me. And as an input, we will make sure that we get an e underscore AI state. And we'll set the name to be new state. 
Going back to our AI controller, we'll make sure to implement this interface. So BPI AI state. We will implement the event like so. So now we have a state to begin with here. What we can do now is we can make a switch on this and say we should behave differently depending on which state that we are getting in to enter here. If we are getting a state that says we're patrolling, we can say we want to run behavior tree and set that to patrolling. Equally, if we're getting searching, we can say that we want to run the behavior tree for searching instead. And that will handle that cleanly. From the begin play, we can say that what is our uh, original state supposed to be? We can say that it's supposed to be uh, like so. And we can say that it's supposed to be patrolling. So when we start playing, we say patrolling, it goes in here and starts a patrolling behavior tree. And that's all good and fine. So let's actually go to our behavior trees and start adding some logic for them. Compile and save. Let's open up our searching. So we will just have some very simple placeholder things here. Uh, to symbolize it is searching for the player. We won't do it that complex, but if this is where you wanted to have the reaction to uh, a security camera being malfunctioning, this is where you would put it. We can start off with a sequencer, making sure that we run through all the different nodes below this one. And we can say, first it's supposed to do the actual searching, and we can do that by actually, um, Let's do a, let's create a task. And we'll go over here and we'll rename this one to BTT for blue behavior tree task. And we'll call this uh, random searching. So this one will be determining how we will be searching essentially. And we will be keeping this very simple. We will just make this one search random positions that it can walk to. So we will override the receive execute AI. Immediately we can also get the finish execute, like so. And what we're essentially going to do here is we're going to get the, the pawn that we're currently, is the AI, we're going to get its actual location. And that we're going to be using to get random reachable point in radius. Actually, we can take the navigatable one. We should be uh, reach navi. Is that not the name? Reach. Is it get? Maybe get random navigatable. This one. Random reachable point in radius. So this makes sure that it's actually something we can reach. This will work for our purposes, I think. In addition to that, we want to say this value that we're getting right now is something we want to expose to the blackboard. So what we can do is we can create a, a new uh, search location. We'll make it of the type blackboard key selector and we'll make sure to expose it on uh, instance editable here so it gets exposed this one we can then say uh, we want to let's get the search location over here and we can say set blackboard as vector we'll make sure to plug this in like so so now we're saving the point that we're supposed to be reaching there and this is all good and fine, and we can say that it's a success. success. So this should be getting us a random point and setting it to a Blackboard variable that we're exposing. So if we go back to our searching, we see that it has defaulted our Blackboard to be the point of interest. Our point of interest doesn't have anything said besides self-actor for now, so we'll add a key. We'll type in vector. Vector. 
and we'll call this uh, search location. Going back to our behavior tree, we can now bring out the task, which we called random searching. And you see now we have a new search location. We choose search location to be the Blackboard key that's supposed to be set from this. In addition to that, we want to probably move to this location. So we'll type in move to. We'll make sure that it has the search location as its target to actually reach. And then after that, we can just have a wait to symbolize that it has reached its area and is now waiting to do something else. So we'll do that for three seconds. After we have done this, we might want to resume our patrolling at some point. So what we can do is we can, let's do another sequence above and let's hook this up. So it does this sequence first here and we can say maybe add a decorator, maybe a loop. And we can say loop this three times and then go back to whatever you're supposed to do. So that's the first part. So the second part here is that it wants to resume patrolling. So to do that, we need to do a few things. We need to add a new task. We'll rename this one to BTT uh, Star Patrol. Going into Star Patrol, we want to override uh, execute AI. We want to add the finish execute. I need to make sure I chose the right execute AI. Yeah. Uh, and in here, we want to uh, start our patrolling again. And we'll keep this one pretty simple. Uh, we'll even do a cast here, despite I don't like doing casts. So we'll do a third person character in this case. And we will make sure that we call the start patrol function that we created earlier, because that one makes sure that we update our to-do list. And then we just say that we're done here. Now we can go back to our behavior tree and say we want to make use of that. So we'll type in start patrol. And we have now done the preparation work for that. However, now we want to actually inform the AI that it's supposed to change the state as well. To do that, we have our, uh, we can actually do this. Let's duplicate the start patrol and say BTT underscore um, set new state. So this will be a task where we set a state for a character. In this task, we can um, mm, mm. We have created an interface, so we can just use the pawn and say set new state and it will send whatever state we have here. However, which state we want to use, we can then say new state up here as a variable. We can make it of the type AI state. We can instance editable it, and we'll make sure to send that one in as our parameter here. Once this is done, we can just say that we're done with the task and we're happy. Now, this state, it gets exposed. So if we go to our behavior tree over here now, and we were to add the task and say new state, we get the task we can see that we now have a new state over here and we can say that we're supposed to go back to patrolling, which makes sense for this because that's what we wanted to do. So we can just save this and we're pretty much done here for now. And we'll save on. And that's all we have time for in this episode. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.